in the headlines. Bandits attack Katsina communities, kill three, abduct dozens. APC unveils Lalong as presidential campaign DG, Keamu as spokesperson. Federal government gets $134 million from AFDB loan, targets $35 million export gain. And on the foreign scene, Thai nightclub fire kills 13 people, injures 35. Hello and welcome to Trans TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Youssef. Hello and welcome once again. The remains of three persons killed in Katsina State on Wednesday evening by suspected terrorists have been laid to rest. The deceased were attacked at Dutsantoni village in Atagarawa local government area of Katsina State. Abdullahi Yamadi has an update and now reports. All the three victims of Wednesday's attack in Katsina, Abrashid Abamana, Najib Tambaba and Isiaku Isa Danzauni have been laid to rest. May he so rest in peace. But Abrashid is my younger brother. He was from Kiwa Primary School where he was a classroom teacher. He was shot dead by suspected bandits because he resisted attempt to be abducted by the terrorists. A huge number of mourners have been trooping to the residences of the deceased to commiserate with them. This is the third time my elder brother was attacked. Last year he was attacked twice at Danzoni village. They now attempted to abduct him, but he refused to cooperate. That is why they killed him. Sadly, a large number of people, including women and children who were abducted by the terrorists during the attack, remain in captivity. The terrorists have already started contacting families of the abductees, demanding for ransom. People here are worried that the terrorists were bold enough to launch an attack in a broad daylight. Even worse is that their locations were considered so close to the ancient city of Katsina, and yet the terrorists were not repelled by security operatives. We are seriously worried by the spread of insecurity. Look at it. The terrorists are advancing towards the city of Katsina. From this point, it's just a kilometer to Katsina city. But yet, terrorists attacked this place in a broad daylight. Hundreds of people have fled Baburuga and Sauni and other neighboring villages to Katsina for the fear of another attack. Observers say it looks like security operatives are overwhelmed by incessant terrorist attacks in Katsina. Only recently, a police officer attached to Safana Division was abducted in Duzima, while another police officer just regained his freedom after paying one million naira as a ransom. Also Wednesday night, the terrorists riding on over 30 motorcycles attacked Nazinta village and abducted over 12 people. Nazinta village is not more than 500 meters away from 35 battalion of the Nigerian army Nazinta barracks, Kazana. Many people are losing hope in government's capacity to protect them from the terrorist attacks. Several calls and text messages put through to Public Relations Officer Kazuma State Command, SP Gambo Isa, were not responded to. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Post Television News, Kazuna. Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, on Thursday, asked Google to block terrorist organizations from YouTube. He made the request when a team from Google visited him in Abuja. Mohammed, who noted that Google is a platform of choice for IPOP, a proscribed terrorist group employed, implored the tech giant to deny IPOP the use of its platform for its acts of violence and destabilization. He said Nigerians are among the most vibrant social media users in the world, with over 100 million internet users in the country, and that internet platforms such as Google, Facebook, TikTok, 
Twitter and WhatsApp enable Nigerians to interact, share ideas, earn a living and participate in social and political affairs. In his remarks, Google Regional Director of Sub-Saharan Africa, Government Affairs and Public Policy, Charles Morito, said the platform has introduced a program called Trusted Flaggers for citizens trained to track and engage with online content in order to flag contents of serious concern. Abuja residents have urged the National Broadcasting Commission to rescind its recent decision imposing fines on Trust TV and other media outlets. The broadcast regulator had come under intense condemnation for penalizing Trust TV for airing a documentary that, highlight, that highlighted the origins of banditry, plights of its victims. The report. Government had accused Trust TV and other media outlets caught up in the NBC fine of glorifying bandits and terrorists. The residents believe government's action through the NBC amounts to gagging the media. Um, hi, I feel it's not really fair because actually you guys are doing your job. It's uh, called investigative journalism. So basically, you know, you have to, at least it's done within the confines. It's not like any tips have been given to them. You're just trying to like give, you know, the government heads up that, okay, this is what's going on, this is what's in, it's in their mind and everything. So I think it's not fair. My opinion, I don't think it's fair. I think they should look into that documentary and extract vital information from there. Because uh, to, to get documentary, that means that is like investigative uh, journalism. You have investigated and you discover something, you are documenting it. They should actually be encouraged, they should actually be applauded for doing such. It shouldn't, it shouldn't lead to giving them, penalizing them. You understand? This is what even I believe the government is supposed to do. Definitely speaking, I don't see anything being, being fair there. Because letting the citizen of this country to know what is happening about the banditry is something that everybody will embrace it. But for the government, for NCC to just uh, find a charge, NBC, to just bring a fine of uh, 5 million naira on, on Trust TV, I think is very wrong. It's not, it's not encouraging. Therefore, they want government to reverse the decision. I don't think it's fair because... Uh, uh, um, uh, journalists, they do a good job by going to, you know, get information for us to know what is happening. I don't think it's fair. If they really sanction them, I, don't, I think it's not fair. Because by doing that, they are denying Daily Trust TV and Nigerians to express their fundamental human rights. There must be freedom of, of speech. The back and forth on the fine imposed by the NBC clearly shows that Nigerians believe that Trust TV was doing its job and providing them with useful insights. They therefore want government to be fair to the TV network and reverse the fine. Fatima Musa, Trust TV News, Abuja. And Justice Basi Nkanang of the Akwa Ibom State High Court on Thursday sentenced Uduak Akpan to death by hanging for the murder of Inyobong Umoren. Umareng, a graduate of philosophy, University of Uyo, was killed on April 2021. She was job hunting while awaiting mobilization for the Compulsory National Youth Service Corps scheme. Udwak father, Udwak's father, Frank Akwan, and his sister, Anwan Basi, who are the second and third accused, have been discharged and acquitted. Elsewhere, proceedings were again stalled at the Federal High Court Lafia in Nasra State in the case between Labaram Magaji and Ahmed Tukur following the outcome of the All Progressives Congress Nasra West Senatorial District primaries. Counsel to the plaintiff, Ghali Umar, who alleged forgery, requested the court to subpoena an INEC official to clarify discrepancies in the documents the parties brought before the court. A worker Abdullahi sent in the report as presented from our studio. In the suit, Labaram Magaji had dragged the All Progressives Congress and Ahmed Tukur to the Federal High Court in Lafia, praying the court to declare him winner of the primary election. He hinged his call on alleged doctrine of delegate list, among other irregularities. Counsel to the plaintiff, Gali Umar, alleged discovering of forged INEX stamp and signature that were used as basis to seek for an adjournment to enable them prepare better. Counsel to the All Progressives Congress, Ibrahim Bawa, on his part, also said the case was adjoined to allow the plaintiff to issue an application to allow an INEC official to make some clarifications. For that purpose, apply for an adjournment that the, the 
certifying officer Omale Samuel should be subpoenaed to court so that to clarify the the discrepancy because there will be no two processes at the same time with different signatures. Is that INEC should be subpoenaed according to him, a staff of INEC should be subpoenaed to come and make some explanation. We can't say what the explanation will be until the person comes to say what he wants to say. After listening to both parties, Justice Nahizina Akolabe granted the application of the plaintiff to allow them to present the witness from INEC to court in the next adjoined date to clarify the controversies raised by the plaintiff and adjoin the matter to 31st August. In an interview, the plaintiff, Labara Magaji, who was in court, reiterated his trust in the judiciary as the last hope of the common man, adding that he is in politics to sanitize the system. Because we need to sanitize the system, and that is the essence of us being in politics, to make sure we wipe out those with criminal tendencies in our political system, so that Nigeria will be better for it. Apart from the Nasarawa Waste Senatorial District Primary, the Federal High Court last year is entertaining over 10 political cases filed before it, arising from the last primary elections conducted by APC in the state. The All Progressives Congress on Thursday unveiled Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State and Chairman of the Northern Governors Forum as the Director General of the party's presidential campaign organization. APC National Chairman Senator Abdullahi Adam announced this while speaking with journalists at the presidential villa Abuja. The national chairman led the presidential candidate Bola Tinubu and vice presidential candidate Kashim Shetima to a meeting with the president in his office. Adam equally unveiled former Minister of State for Labour and Productivity Festus Kiyamo as the interim spokesperson of the campaign organization, while the deputy spokesperson is Hanatu Musa. According to him, the meeting was to brief the president and get his approval on the plans of the party regarding the campaign outfits and organogram. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has appointed Daniel Buala and Senator Dino Malaye as his campaign spokespersons. While Malaye was defeated in the last PDP senatorial primary election for Kogi West Senatorial District, Buala, who dumped the ruling All Progressives Congress for the PDP a few weeks ago, was a legal aide to the Deputy Senate President, Ovie Omo Agege. Statement released on Thursday by the media advisor to Atiku, Paul Ibe, said the two appointments would take immediate effect. You're watching Trust TV News Update. And coming up after the break, Gishiri residents demand access road healthcare facilities. Details of this and more after the break. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now a recap of our top stories. Bandits attack Kazana communities, kill three, abduct dozens. And APC unveils Lalong as presidential campaign DG, Keamo as spokesperson. 
Now moving on to other news. Kaduna State University chapter of the academic staff of Universities ASU has rejected the order of resumption of academic activities in the institution. The union says no examination is taking place, contrary to management's earlier announcement that students have already resumed writing examinations. The report. Academic activities at the Kaduna State University has paralyzed for months due to the lingering ASU strike. Earlier this week, the management of Kaduna State University announced the resumption of academic activities in the school for the students to write their exams. You can go around and see if it were a ghost that are invigilating the exams. The academic staff, you can interview them. Um, the truth of the matter is that um, we have gotten about 80% support. Um, if you had come here yesterday, you will have seen um, letters of lecturers who have resigned from the union. They said they are no longer members of the union. Uh, they are tired of um, the inconsistent um, behavior of the union because um, the local issues that they're supposed to table before government, they have not done that. During a media chat, the visitor of the university and the university governor Nasri El Fai threatened to sack ASU members if they refuse to resume academic activities. Dr. Peter Adamo is the ASU chairman at Kaduna State University and he says the strike is still ongoing as none of their members supervise the examination the school management said is ongoing, adding that they are not afraid of the sack threats. This thing is actually negotiated for everybody because at the moment I can tell you that this strike that we are, that we are in right now is for the benefit of this same university because after this strike I'm sure this university will get a lot and lot of money and projects will be placed everywhere in this university. So while if someone say that it's a large strike when they are also that are beneficiary. Actually we are not bothered because we know we are in a democratic setting where uh, we are being governed under rules and regulations, there are procedures. So we are not, not worried because we know even if that will happen, there must be some procedures that must be followed. Few students are back in the school. However, no academic activity is taking place. Some of the students expressed dismay over the lingering situation in the university. When we got the information that we should resume back school and just come and write exams, we were not really happy about it. Because especially students in 400 level, you've not finished most of your syllabus and then they will just call you a graduate. So the whole thing is not making sense, whereby you just graduate halfway. Actually, us the students of Cardinal State University, we feel very bad about the resumption because the management told us to resume school and we resume school and there's nothing going on. Actually, the fifth exam for us and we are not writing it. Will the members of ASU resume to avoid the sack by the visitor of university and governor of Cardinal State, Nasri Elfai? Time will provide the answer. Now, residents of Gishiri community, a suburb located around Katabe district within the federal capital territory, have decried the non-availability of some social amenities and deteriorating state of existing ones. Trans TV's Aisha Salihu, who visited the community, which is home to people from over 30 ethnic groups in the country, reports that the residents are asking the government to provide basic healthcare facilities, accessible roads, schools and security to enhance their living condition. The report. Talked within the Abuja Municipal Area Council is Gishiri Community. Despite its proximity to the city centre, the community lacks accessible roads and other necessities of life. Members of the community have taken it upon themselves to provide some of these necessities due to continuous government neglect. Three days, we will go and mark. We will write a letter, go and mark. For me, try do our roads to now and not do it. So, school here, and not do So, I'm being here, we write them through our mark now and not do it. So, now, children, you're going to meet my here and no Sunday school here, but pro school day. We don't have junior secondary school and senior secondary school. We will be trekking to school and the road is not good. Our road here, those where you were coming, you see how the road is very bad. Although the community has constructed a primary health care facility, residents worry that the lives of people, 
especially women and children, who patronize it and not safe because it's below standard. Beyond the obvious deficiencies in the health facility, Gishiri community also battles environmental pollution, especially during the rainy season. Sometimes people, so people will sick. There is no standard hospital. There will be rushing emergency to like my tema, go to Uze. Sometimes they will not see the doctor to attend to them. The primary health care, though we have one, but the one we are having there is just like a, a room that, are, that they are managing. The primary health care we have is too small for the community. Like the primary health care, if five people are sick, there is no anyhow five people can be there because it's very small. They are also not spared of the menace of insecurity as the unholy activities of miscreants now constitute a threat to residents. These are scavengers. That's the call them Babambola. Something around six, something in the morning like this, one person don't take what he want to take. Your house direct, they'll come and knock your house. If you leave something outside, they will carry it and go. And they always tear people's house to enter, carry what they want. Sometimes they came with knife. If they overpower you have nothing to do. Before you know, they will enter our houses, even though you have pot that you cook. You wake up the next morning, they have already packed everything. Calls continue to inundate the Federal Capital Territory Administration through the Abuja Municipal Area Council Office to take into cognizance the lack of basic amenities that are necessities for human existence. We want government to help us for the security. Sensitization so that people will come and sensitize people on how to keep their environment clean. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And naval officers attached to the forward operating base, FOB Badagri, Lagos, have foiled an attempt by some criminals to smuggle 351 bags of foreign rice worth millions of naira into the country through the Badagri Port Nova waterways. Also, 40 packs of cannabis sativa weighing 21 kilograms were seized in the Badagri area of the state. The recovered contraband was handed over to NDLEA and the Niger Customs Service, where the commanding officer, FOB, said no arrest was made as the suspects fled on sighting the naval patrol team. They attributed the seizure to an attestation of synergy among the Navy, Customs, Army and the NDLEA. President Mahmoud Buhari says the rapid integration of solar power into the country's energy mix will lead to an increase in electricity access to underserved and unserved communities. To this end, Nigeria has secured a $1.5 billion loan from the U.S. Exim Bank to deliver solar power infrastructure in 10 different locations in the country. The president has promised that the federal government will remain committed to collaborating with the private sector in improving energy access, creating jobs and industrial development. In a related development, the Africa Development Bank, AFDB, has given a loan facility which will be used to fund part of the implementation of the National Strategy for Wheat Self-Sufficiency. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohammed Mahmoud, explained that the initiative will intensify wheat production in 14 states with an expected output of 750,000 metric tons of wheat. We do have very robust collaboration with state government. I mentioned a number of projects here that we are working with the state government. And one of the things first is to allow the state to even express interest. No one is shoving anything down somebody's throat. Are you interested in NLTP? Are you interested in LPRES? Are you interested in this uh, wheat production, in this, in that? You are interested? Yes, okay. If it's a situation where the federal government will fund 60%, 80%, you provide uh, 20%. We do that, and we have a lot of those. Civil society organizations and the media have been urged to hold government accountable for development purposes through budgetary participation. The advice was given at a budgetary performance quarterly review meeting in Bauchi State. The report. First, mainly on budget performance and tracking as a way of preparing journalists and civil society representatives to pressurize government through data-based reporting to do more through their policies and programs. One of the arguments is about people-oriented projects that are always captured in budgets but never see the light of day even after funds have been released. 
It's a gap uh, of uh, the level of citizens' participation in governance. Uh, and in any democratic setting, uh, it can be uh, better if uh, citizens are fully engaged in all the processes. Um, budgetary process is one of the important uh, 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 issues that uh, both the citizens and the government needs to collaborate together to have form a synergy and work together to ensure that uh, 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 the development activities are conducted in the state effectively. Uh, so that's why we invited the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Subay, Minister of Education, and also uh, we invited uh, civil society organization that are working in those communities to now assess the level of performance of the budget to share uh, experiences and also drive ways of entry and advocacy uh, to uh, issues that we can engage the government to ensure uh, that development is set down to the communities as uh, when do and based on the needs and priorities of the people. Media representatives want the authorities to encourage citizen participation in the budget process as a way of promoting accountability on the part of the government. Also be active participants with the public, with communities. Journalists, just like the civil society organization, as well as mobilize the citizens to make sure that the budget process, you know, the budget uh, process, you know, citizens are not only involved, to make sure that those that are to be held accountable are held accountable. Center for Information Technology and Development, while explaining the importance of the quarterly review meeting, said it will make the government to embrace transparency in its dealings with the people. And on the foreign scene, at least 13 people were killed and 35 injured when a fire broke out at a nightclub in Thailand's eastern Chomburi province early on Friday, a police official said. The cause of the fire is still unknown and all victims so far have been identified as Thai nationals. A separate statement from the Chomburi Emergency Service described 14 of the injuries as severe. Local TV footage showed people fleeing the fire which engulfed the Mountain B nightclub about 80, 180 kilometers southeast of the capital, Bangkok, while emergency workers put out flames and looked through the burnt out premises with shoes and bottles strewn across the ground. And that wraps up Trust TV News update for this hour. For more news, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.